The 2024 WNBA draft was one for the history books as we saw one of the most prolific draft classes ever come through to the WNBA with big names such as Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Camila Cardoso, and numerous other players are now going to be playing at a professional level. So we did go live here on Chat Sports during the WNBA draft. So I wanted to hop back on here and give our grades for the 12 WNBA teams and what we thought of their picks. So I am Ali Barefoot, and if you guys are watching this right now, I have one request for you. If you want more WNBA coverage, which is something we have never done here, at Chat Sports. Well, go on ahead and tell us. All you guys have to do is hit that sub button. That'll tell us everything we didn't know about one of the biggest growing sports that I have seen in America so far. If you love the WNBA, if you're excited for the regular season, hit that sub button for me. And speaking of the regular season, they do start on May 14th. There's a very quick turnaround when it comes to the WNBA draft and the number one overall pick, of course, was to the Indiana Fever, and they took Caitlin Clark, which immediately in my mind is an A+. Whoever gets Caitlin Clark, you won the draft. Personally, I know there was a lot of players in this draft, but we're looking at one right now, and that is going to be Caitlin Clark. She, of course, is the NCAA Division I all-time leading scorer, men and women's, and she completely deserves it. She is retired now for Iowa for her jersey, number 22, two-time AP Player of the Year, and she is going to change the game. There's so much I can say about Caitlin Clark, but you guys already know it. It's Caitlin Clark. Not to mention, though, they also picked up Celeste Taylor here in the draft, which I personally thought was a really good pickup here in the second round. With Celeste Taylor, you're getting another point guard as well, one of the best perimeter defenders in the draft, and they ended it up with Leilani from Florida. I personally think this was a steal in the third round when you're going to be given a projected draft steal. They absolutely lived up to the height. I think she can drain a three from pretty much anywhere on the court, which will go really nicely paired with the best three-point shooter in the NCAA women's team, the Caitlin Clark. So I think the Indiana Fever honestly won this draft just because they got Caitlin Clark. So that leads me to my first question here before I get into the other 11 teams is who was the biggest winner of the 2024 WNBA draft? There were several players that these teams got to choose from, which what made the 2024 WNBA draft so special. Go ahead and comment that down below. Let me go into pick number two, the Los Angeles Sparks. Keep in mind, the Sparks had number two and number four, and I'm going to give them an A+. Number one, they took Cameron Brink, who was made for the spotlight. Cameron Brink is the best shot blocker I have ever seen in my life coming from the NCAA. She led the nation, not just women's, but also men's, averaging about three and a half blocks per game. I think she's going to pair really nicely with Rakia Jackson, who, in my opinion, can score at every single position. She is a three-level threat when it comes to scoring, and she is right-handed, but my favorite thing about her is that she uses her left hand seamlessly. She finds the high, arcing three-point shot, and she knows how to defend the rim. She is going to do well in the WNBA. Now, coming in the third pick here for the Los Angeles Sparks will be Mackenzie Forbes. I also think you can't go wrong here with her. The childhood dream of hers to be in the WNBA and the fact that she is averaging about 14.5 points per game, 37% from the three-point line as a small forward. I think she just showed her peak of what she can do in her season, senior season when she hit a career high points and rebounds. So overall, an A-plus is going to go to the second pick as well. The third team that did have the chance to snag some really good talent here in the WNBA would be the Chicago Sky. I got to give them an A right off the bat. There was a lot of controversy on whether or not the Sky would take Brink or Cordoso, but of course they were going to go with whoever fell to the number three spot, and that was Camilla. I do not think this is a slight at all to what she can do. She complements the WNBA playing style already really well, being six foot seven, the most outstanding player in the NCAA tournament. She had a 72.6 defensive rating, top 10 in the nation. And there are a lot of doubters out there already right now on Twitter saying, how is she going to pair up with Angel Reese when they could have gotten somebody like Rakia Jackson? at number three, who did ultimately fall to number four. I think Angel Reese personally will do well with somebody like Cordoso because you're going to get a stretch four here with somebody like Angel Reese. I think that they both rebound very efficiently. Maybe if they don't work in the same unit, 
You can also try to move some players around, but I think Angel Reese will do well. If it doesn't work, a trade can also always be on the horizon. Here's a number three pick that I didn't really agree with. Brianna Maxwell, they were taken number one here in the second round when you still had a ton of players like Nakia Mule, Daisha Fair. If you really wanted to get some three-point shooting, you went with Maxwell. That wasn't my favorite. So overall, the fact that you grabbed Cordoso and Angel Reese, you got to give them an A. Didn't give them an A+. Plus because of that pick, but this was a huge controversy leading up to the draft. Cameron Brink or Camela Cardoso to go number two? Well, of course, it did go with Cameron Brink, but now that they have their selections with the WNBA draft, who will have a better WNBA career? Who's the better pick here? Type CB for Cameron Brink. Type KC for Camila Cardoso. Down below, we do move on to the team who had the fourth the fifth overall pick in the WNBA draft. They made a couple of selections here. Here is where my low score starts to hit. The Dallas Wings. I know the Dallas Wings really could have fit anybody anywhere as they are trying to rebuild. And they did end up taking J.C. Sheldon here at their first pick, number five. I actually do agree with J.C. Sheldon here. As you are looking for a perimeter defender, I think that J.C. Sheldon really does fit this mold. As she does kind of struggle with shooting around the three-point line, I think her M.O. is really going to be here as she was a two-time Big Ten all-defensive team player. Then they went international, ended up picking Carla Late in round one, pick number nine. Of course, I do think this is one of the better international players that were picked. This is one of the best international draft classes we have ever seen here in the WNBA, she's 19 years old and excels in ball screen sets. And of course, they did have the third to last pick here in the draft, which is going to be Ashley Owusu. I wasn't thrilled about this pick, but I do understand that most of the time in your late round third pick, you're really just trying to give them a trial to see if they fit with this team. So overall, I give them a B minus because you are going to get you're going to fill your void of that that perimeter defense. But you're also going to go a little bit international with a 19 year old who you can develop for the next couple of years. Coming in hot, the Washington Mystics, who came in with the next pick. Oof, was not my favorite team to make some moves here. However, they did snag one of my favorite players from UConn out of the strap, which was Aaliyah Edwards. After this, it falls off very slightly. With Aaliyah Edwards, you are getting the offensive rebound queen here. She constantly defends the rim protection, but she can also know how to shoot a three if she needs to. I think Aaliyah Edwards is going to do phenomenal things in the WNBA, and I think it starts here with the Washington Mystics. After that, the next two picks were not my favorite here, which is going to lead me to give them a C. While they did go on ahead and pick up another pick in the second and third round, they did fill some voids in terms of needing some defense and some depth, but I thought there were better picks still left on the board by the time the Mystics did have their choice. So overall, I do give it a C. The Minnesota Lynx are going to come in here with a B in this year's drafts. They picked up some big names and maybe not so much. So we started off here with Alyssa Pilly. I thought she was phenomenal in college at Utah, and I think she is going to do great things here in the WNBA. When you're talking about Pilly, you're talking about a six foot two small forward, a pick and pop forward, if you will. She's got great floor spacing ability, and she won the Pac-12 Player of the Year when she was a junior. Not to mention, she dropped 37 points against the reigning champions in uh, that is South Carolina. Kiki Jefferson, my JMU Duke, who transferred to Louisville. She's tenacious. She's scrappy. She's got to add a couple more moves in her bag, but once she does, she could really be a steal for the WNBA. I hope she does great. I think this was a great pickup for the Minnesota Lynx, but only would have two. I'm going to give them a B. I love Kiki Jefferson. I may be a little biased, but Alyssa was a great pick in the first round. So moving forward, Connecticut Sun, I'm going to give it a C. I thought the Connecticut Sun, who had a really great season adding Diana, Diana Taurasi, I don't know if they added the best resources to fill in around her. So round three, they did get a, a really good pick here with what they had available. But let me go on ahead and bring it back here to their round one. They're going to go on ahead and get an international player, okay? So I do think Layla was one of the better picks here at the international prospect. She's really good off the bounce, and she can work well in ISO. Tiana Jackson as well. I thought she has a lot of stuff to offer in her bag, which could move the Connecticut Sun a little bit forward. However, then you kind of go into Hel Helena Pua, who you did, you did hear uh, the GM of the Connecticut Sun say that she was the steal of the draft. And then you have Abby Sue, who's going to come in here. It took a gap year in 2020, but obviously provided enough 
in her college career to be able to make something of herself the WNBA draft. I do believe that maybe they'll get rid of one of these players before the regular season starts. So I'm interested to see how these players will mesh with an already very successful Connecticut Sun. The New York Liberty, C+, plus, man. The New York Liberty, the WNBA runner-up for the finals, didn't really add a whole lot to their roster, in my opinion. When you're going to get Markeisha Davis, I, I thought this was a really good pickup here in the first round. But there were also still a lot of good players that were there. Really, she was a need for perimeter defense, which she excels at. She set career high points and assists. She set a career high in points, assists, and steals while she was at Ole Miss. And then he added Jessica Carter, who was also a very big time role here at Mississippi State. You picked her up here in round two, uh, once again towards the end of the round. And then, of course, round three is when you got Caitlin Davis. She was kind of last of the litter in this box. So overall, I thought when you needed a three-point perimeter, when you need a perimeter defender, yes, you did score that with your first pick, but I don't think their needs were primarily addressed here with the New York Liberty. So the Atlanta dream is going to be up next, but first I do want you guys to go on ahead and hit that sub button for me as I do have a quick question here for you guys, and that is just overall, who was the biggest loser of the 2024, excuse me, who was the biggest loser of the 2024 WNBA draft? Go on ahead and comment that down below while we got to get through a couple more teams here if you want to know their overall grade. The Atlanta Dream, I am going to end up giving them a B plus. They did not have a pick here until I believe it was the second round, which of course there still were a lot of talent still left here for the WNBA, but actually they did take one international player, the very last pick of round one, I think, Nadia was one of the best steals here internationally. She does great in transition defense. Tops it off with one more international player here, Iso Bell. She averaged about 15 and a half points per game. I think offensively she will be a threat. And then a triple threat coming in from Italy is Matilde. The Atlanta Dream obviously had priorities set on what these 19-year-olds can do across the pond, so I'm really excited to see their skills translate to the WNBA. I think the Atlanta Dream needed a rebuild. It's exactly what they did. Seattle Storm coming in a hot A. They got a steal at pick number 14, round two, with Nik Nikia Mule. I think she did phenomenal at UConn. How offensively, maybe not, but a lot of people in the comments called her the secretary of defense. She is insane. To top it off with Mackenzie Holmes, who I think is personally a steal when it comes to point guards in the WNBA draft. I thought she did great at Indiana. She will have knee surgery in May, but she does say she'll be ready to go in 2025. So the Seattle Storm grade, I'm going to give them an A. Las Vegas, Las Vegas Aces, the back-to-back -back champions. They had big moves to make, and boy, did they not disappoint. Coming in with their first pick of the draft, you're going to take Daisha Fair. Come on, it's not even fair how good she is and how good this pick is. She is 5'5", five five, but she knows how to work her angles against taller defenders. I'm really excited to see what she does here in the WNBA. To top it off, with the glue of Iowa, Kate Martin, who said she was at the draft just to see Caitlin Clark and then heard her name. Coming in with Elizabeth Kitley, she was supposed to be first round. She dropped to round two, pick number 24, because she tore ACL at the end of the regular season, which is why I think she's a steal of this draft as well. Angel Jackson, the last pick in the draft. Ten points per game, seven boards per game. You can never be mad at somebody that's going to grab seven boards per game. I think offensively, Defensively, the Las Vegas Aces just got better. And the Phoenix Mercury, last but not least, I'm going to give them a C+. Plus. It wasn't what I really wanted from the team that came in last in the WNBA last year. They did take Charisma Osborne, who I do really adore in this draft. I think Charisma Osborne has a lot more in her bag that is only going to get better with some professional help. She's a locker room player, and I think she will do great around the perimeter. Jazz Shelley as well, round three, pick number 29. I know there wasn't a ton of people to pick here, but I think the Nebraska guard is going to do really good things here. For the Phoenix Mercury, she's a good passer, and she's got big assist numbers. So if you got to get Diana Taurasi the ball, well, you know who to start with the ball as well. So overall, these are my grades for the 2024 WNBA Draft. If you guys don't agree with me, comment down below. Let's talk about it. If you do, go on ahead and share some love. And as always, hit that sub button if you want more WNBA coverage.